At this pivotal time in humanity's evolution, we are beginning to remember our organic technology. A technology which used correctly can create an experience that the majority of people the world over want to live. It is time to use this technology consciously for our own benefit and healing and no longer unconsciously for our own demise. We are divine creatures, creating both our own personal and our collective experience, moment to moment. We invite you to join us in the reawakening of this technology through experiment and experience the power to create and manifest. Become part of the 3% the collective imagination it's been a, a pretty extraordinary um, 24 to 48 hours for me personally and energetically I, I wow I don't know what to call it, but Chris, you got an interest, and we we have a we have a mission for everybody who's currently listening. We do have a, a small mission for you. Um, I, I've got one of the guys that uh, Chris and I know made contact with Chris yesterday. Actually, it was earlier this morning. Earlier this morning. Mm-hmm. You want to you want to kick off and tell him what tell them what they what happened? Yeah, this came information came from Gordon, uh, who was uh, Gordon's a dowser. And in a dowsing session, I think yesterday, he was instructed, and he normally doesn't get um, sort of direct messages while he's dowsing, but he was instructed to go and check the water, which he did. And he filled up a sink and pulled the plug out. And in the southern hemisphere, the water usually goes clockwise down the plug hole from a still body of water in the sink. And it went counterclockwise. And he checked it again, and he checked it with dye, and it just kept going counterclockwise. So he rang me this morning. And he said we've actually he actually had people, his own contacts in the northern hemisphere checking, and they should be running counterclockwise, but they were getting clockwise, and he was getting counterclockwise. In other words, that the Coriolis forces have reversed. These are the the, the small, they're sort of small forces that are. I think uh, it's an interaction between the rotation of the Earth and the um, presence of the magnetic fields gives a little bit of a spin to water when it's going down a plug hole undisturbed from, say, a still sink of water. If it's reversed, if it's, for instance, just not there and the water's going straight down the sink, what it means is that the electromagnetic field of the planet is shifting in some way. So here's our mission. Uh, fill up a, a reasonably deep full of sink, uh, <laughs> deep sink full of water. Preferably with a, in a sink where the plug hole's in the middle of the sink, just to make sure the symmetry is right. Let it sit for a while so it's completely still, and then use I don't know a, a, um, a perhaps a coat hanger or something, and very gently pull the the plug off to one side, and just see what way the water spins, whether it goes clockwise or anti-clockwise. And uh, if anyone wants to do this while the show's on and drop it in the chat, that would be very interesting. Yes, we've what's got people it, running off to flush their toilets and do all sorts of things. No, not, not, you, can't, you can't flush the toilet because that water comes out with a velocity and a direction, so it's not really reliable. You need to do it from a still body of water. So if, if you whip out now and fill up the sink and let it you know, come back to the show and then go back in a few minutes and pull the plug out, tell us what happens. Now, also, uh, Gordon... Uh, did he also say that he had a strange phenomenon in that it didn't look like it went in any direction at one point? Yeah, he's, uh, he went back and checked it uh, about half an hour ago and he got nothing. It went just straight down the plug hole. And if you can imagine, uh, if anyone's been sailing, when you actually do a turn into wind, the, the sail just flaps a bit as you're pointing into wind. If the earth magnetic fields are shifting and waffling, then we could get differences all over the place and it could actually change. It, it might change in half an hour or an hour. It might do something else. So what I'm expecting, if we're in this sort of s- state of change, 
is that people will get either something very different to what they've normally gotten or will get nothing at all. And then, you know, in six hours' time, it might go back to normal and then it might shift again because uh, it, it seems that we are in an energetic flux of some sort or it, it would seem a reasonable conclusion if this is taking place that things are shifting around energetically for sure. I woke up this morning to no phone and no internet. So I'm currently sitting at a girlfriend's house and half an hour ago I checked her sink. She has a nice deep sink in the kitchen. And there's only about two or three seconds there where you can really tell what direction it's going. And for me, it definitely looked uh, anti. Counterclockwise. Counter. Now, what's yeah, our supposed to do? It's supposed to be clockwise down here. It's clockwise. Yep. Now, I checked my sink. I was still getting counterclockwise, but it wasn't an ideal sink, and I need to check it later. So uh, that's our experiment for this morning in science class. <laughs> well, I like the, the feeling I'll expect a written port report at the end of the show. <laughs> yes, you must. For for me the feeling is like we shifted from cosmic constipation to cosmic diarrhea. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> I can't wait to I can't wait to hear what the chat has to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a load. <laughs> Well, he went there <laughs> following the lead. Okay, someone said the sink and the toilet are doing different things in their place. Yeah, look, this, I have to say, in case, uh, just for the people who rushed off immediately and flushed the toilet when we started, the, the water in the toilet comes out of the system with some velocity and some direction, so it won't necessarily be a good test. It's a, it needs to be a still body of water, so fill up the sink and let it sit for a few minutes. You also got clockwise in Florida. <clears throat> you got clockwise in Florida. Well, mm -hmm. there we go. It should be running the other way. It shouldn't be. Someone else says, yeah. can't fix if you ask me. Oh, well, that might be in reference to what you said. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, my husband's filling up the kitchen sink as we speak. Someone yep. else in New York yep. is going clockwise. So it looks like the Northern Hemisphere, clockwise in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Outer in New England. Another thing, you've got, to, you've got to look at the very center of the vortex because sometimes the, the surface of the water will produce kind of uh, distracting effects. You have to look right down in the center of the vortex down near the plug hole to see what yeah. direction it's going. Someone in Adelaide is anti. There you go. There you go. Wow. So, okay. I wonder if there's anything else, I mean, apart from us monitoring this. Yes. Well, while people while people are filling with their sinks, Brian, why don't you talk about the magnetometer effect from the documents? <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute because I was filling up my sink with water. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I had to run back to my computer when I heard you call my name. Um, so <clears throat> the magnetometer, yeah. Um, well, Dee posted about it on the her removing the shackles blog this morning. I woke up to some uh, to some Skype chats, and there's so many rooms to follow these days. But uh, somebody had talked about. Oh, I think it's Heather. Heather copied and pasted somebody saying something about um, an app that can be downloaded that can be you know pick up electromagnetic frequencies, and they they downloaded it and put it over the most recent UCC filing, and the thing was, like, off the Richter scale. And um, I thought it was interesting. And then somebody else had said that they downloaded it and tried it again, and now all of a sudden I'm thinking, all right, what's all this fuss about? And so I uh, I went in and I tried to find it. I think it's called – it's called e – it's um, put out called by – It's called ET Contact. ET Contact Tool, put out by Stephen Greer's – um, team. Um, he's Stephen Greer, the guy who's putting out the serious movie. And anyway, so I had the documents on my couch, and I, you know, it's basically just like an iPhone app where you can do it on your your iPad. And I was using a, a, a set of test papers, and it was kind of hovering around the 40, 45 to, to 65 mark. And then you put it over the UCC documents, and it just goes off the scale, and it's got this little a uh, high frequency pitch noise that it makes when it goes into the red. And I haven't really been messing around with it um all day, but I've now talked to a, a couple of people that have gotten the same results. 
And um, pretty interesting to say the least. I guess this thing picks up electromagnetic frequency. So what does that say about the energetics that are um, uh, kind of woven into it's just ink to paper with these documents, the energetic frequency that it, that it puts out. So anybody who wants to go out and, and make Stephen Greer some money on buying a 699 iPhone app and testing this out for yourself, I haven't talked to anybody that hasn't seen that same result just yet. So you've yeah, been comparing... I've just, I've just downloaded it, so I'm, I haven't managed to test anything yet. Yeah. Now, Brian, what you were doing was comparing uh, just ordinary documents to uh, documents, the printed version of the document from yesterday's show. Correct. Yeah, Correct. I have a, my, my test subjects were, let's see, uh, it was like a, like a printout for some, an air travel trip and then just like an insurance document. So just, you know, regular paperwork and then going over and then putting it over the, uh, all three pages of the UCC filing that I had printed. And it was just, you and it's got this high frequency pitch noise. It's like, when it does mm -hmm. it too, so it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I I um I don't know. I, there's not a whole lot that you can you can um, try to understand with your rational mind that would ex explain that kind of phenomena. So I would just suggest anybody that wants to test it out, go ahead and try it for themselves. See what comes up. Yep, that's absolutely fascinating. And the the other interesting thing you mentioned is the place on the desk where the document had been resting seemed to actually retain some of the energy this was something you commented on before yeah yeah i um i had the paper sitting in the same spot on the uh on the couch next to my computer and then when i moved the papers away there was nothing there before i put the papers and then when i moved the papers away the spot on my couch still held the same charges that the papers were still there so i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to play around with it tonight and see if i can get the same result um in other other areas but it's uh, pretty fascinating to see. Yeah, well, someone else mentioned that they um, they were just cutting and pasting text <clears throat> on the computer from one program to another, and when they when they copied and pasted the text, it actually fired off the alarm on their iPhone on the magnetometer app. Mm. So something's going on there, folks. Bum, yeah. bum, bum. Mm. So what is going on? So we may <laughs> we may have magnetic fluctuations. And if anybody in the chat room is currently on their computer and see if wants to do a search, see if there's anything else out there right now online about possible effects or observations of this. Oh, I'd be interested because so we only just this, you know, we only just sort of came across this a few minutes before we went live. So and run off and did our own little think tests. Um, so I haven't even had a chance to get out there and have a look. But I'd be interested. Experiment from Heather. Well, we have active solar X-rays right now, but the geomagnetic field is being supposedly being quiet. I'm um, taking a look here. Just give me a second. All right, Heather's saying a suggested experiment. Uh, print out the text from the UCC doc and sign your name to it with "as eternal essence embodied" after it, and then see what happens to your magnet magnetometer. <coughs> That'll be a fun little project. Fascinating. Mm. Fascinating, yeah. All right, who else is having a trippy time? <laughs> and I'm asking everybody, if you're in the chat room, you know, what's going on? What's happening with you? Are you, are you feeling something? I mean, and for those of you who haven't seen it, and I, I do actually want to go into this just a little bit, um, George Cavasilis and... I don't, I, I've interviewed George a few times and, and one of the things he's been very consistent with is that the 20, 21st of December 2012 date was a ruse. Um, it's the, and he talks about it being the, it's the procession of the equinoxes, not the solstices, and that it's this equinox that's, that's actually the time of the big shift. Uh, he recently put a, new, a video up in regard to that if you haven't seen it, it was, it's only been put up for, say, a week or so, <coughs> talking about how this amazing energy that's building at this time and, and, and being expressed at this time, uh, there are attempts to hijack it, of course, um, and that 
one of the things they're kind of relying on is a lot of the disappointment by setting us up for December 21st, 2012, and a lot of people not experiencing anything. Some people did. They, they certainly felt the energy. I mean, the energy of now is supposed to be very similar to the energy of then. Um, and with building everybody up, building everyone's expectations up, and then having them sort of drop with disappointment, feeding on that, um, and hoping that we won't take any notice of what's going on now, and channeling our energy into something else. And one of the, one of the messages that came out just a few days ago into the sort of, I guess, the light worker community was that the Pope is supposed to be a walk-in and that we're all supposed to send him lots of love and light and all of our energy and all of our good stuff. And that came out a few days after George's video and I went, well, there you go. I mean, he... He was uh, very emphatic that they're going to do things in order to try and harness our energy at this time. And that looked to me was a glaring and obvious attempt. Um, I just wanted to get a, everyone else's take on that. Hmm. Anyone got anything to say? Oh, well, it's not, it's actually, it's not just uh, the, that particular message they put into the light worker community to try and rip off energy. But if you've been following it on the mainstream media, it's it's like a political campaign. Uh, you know, pretty much got the Pope walking on water. Now this guy can do no wrong, and and, and they're trying to, to change the whole character of the of the Catholic Church by spinning this the arrival of this one person in the role as Pope. And I ain't buying it. it. Nothing else has changed about the Church. Just the guy at the top and the things they're saying about him. Every, everything else about the church that's in place and wreaking havoc, it's still there. So we're just looking at spin doctoring in both the mainstream media and mm. the alternative media, it would appear. What are your thoughts, Dee? Well, I have to say, I, I, I and I just glanced at Fulford's uh, uh, report that he put out yesterday, and I literally, seriously, just scanned through it very, very quickly. And maybe I'm wrong, but my first impression from just scanning it was, is he seriously kind of liking this new Pope? Like, I expected, you know, with the Pope being from the Jesuit order, I expected Fulford to be, you know, lit up like a Christmas tree on this. And his article really shocked me. I expected a lot more, and it seemed very... Oh, you know. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. Maybe he's falling for the spin doctoring too. Who knows? Hmm. I think. Um, you know, Thomas, you know, Lisa, can you guys hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. This is Heather. I just giggle because what do you need an ambassadorial office to source if source there's over seven billion of source on the planet? I mean, who are they really talking to at that point? Mm. Uh, everyone is what's the point of having an ambassador ambassador office on the planet. So I'm kind of interested to see, you know, not really so much the back of that. For me it's irrelevant at this point. But I'm really excited to see everyone just show everything showing what it is and watch everyone see what it is. The conversations are already happening. So that's all I have to say on that one. Thank you. And I think Thomas has got something to add, too. Thomas, are you there? Oh. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. How are you? Hey, Thomas. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm exceptional. Can't you tell? <laughs> As always. <laughs> well, uh, the only thing I'm watching is more people leaving their bodies, uh, what humans call death. And something and I sent you yesterday, a link, and I'll put it here in the Skype chat for everyone to see when they'd like to, and also they can put that in the chat room if you'd like. Uh, that's a man in Ontario that spent the last six months of his life uh, building a, a relationship, an interaction with the Sasquatch people. And they're coming out, and there's one footprint in there that he measures at 18 inches long, 
and the stride between each footprint is 63 inches. That's three inches more than five feet. And there's a, a little barefoot. Now, I don't know anybody that walks around barefoot in the snow. And if it was a wooden stomper, you'd be able to tell because it'd be flat and even. But these are very flexible footprints like a barefoot person. So uh, when you have a chance, check out that link. I don't know if you looked at it or not, Lisa. But yes, the, I did. What did you think of it? Yeah, it looks like footprints. Rather <laughs> large ones. <laughs> yeah, and there's some audio in there, and I've, I've heard things very similar to that uh, with the group that I interact with at times. So the Sasquatch people are on the move, and they're coming out, and they wouldn't be doing so unless things were changing, changing in a beneficial manner for all of us. <clears throat> That's have pretty they, exciting, have they Thomas. spoken to you? If they spoken to you directly with, okay, we're coming out now, or and this is why. I mean, have they have they said anything? No, there there is a. Uh, how do I what what verbiage do I use on this? There is a. Uh, oh, there's a momentum, and they're adjusting and and flowing with the momentum that is going on the planet right now. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and I, and I got to tell you about this new pope. Uh, he's not going to last very long. I know he's part Indian, and so if, if, he, if the ancestors are watching him very close, and if, the, if if he gets out of line too much, the ancestors will put a stop to it real quick. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yes. And he's from Argentina, and that's everything from Canada to Argentina was Indians before Columbus showed up. So uh, he's at least part Indian. Mm-hmm. So how are you feeling yourself, Thomas, about the energy shift? Uh, I've been doing quite a bit of work myself and and uh, kind of going against things that I have in place. I'm consciously remembering things in the body uh, when the body comes back to consciousness. And I don't, I turned that off back when I was a teenager and now it's, seem to come back on on its own all of a sudden and so there's things that I've been doing with uh, certain people, a woman in Mississippi in particular because she's got Sasquatch she's working with over there in Mississippi and it's getting all sorts of interesting It's getting all sorts of interesting yeah Can you elaborate? Uh, Well what I can elaborate on is that uh, the final choices are being tallied or counted, if you will, uh, just to put a, a type of verbiage to it. Well, uh, we've talked e- about the energetic accounting for the last few weeks. Well, uh, then I'm I'm being a, a type of field worker for you guys because the energetic decisions or choices are being tallied and finalized, so to speak. Uh, because this whole shift thing has not occurred yet. So you, I know that you've been monitoring the obituaries, looking mm-hmm. at the statistics of people leaving the planet. Are they still sort of increasing exponentially? I don't know about exponentially, but yes, they're consistent with the amount of people that are leaving. And in fact, this morning when I when I woke up, uh, I was called by a woman in Canada. Uh, because an elder on the Cree Nation uh, woke up this morning and found his son hanging from a rope because his son hung himself last night. Oh, no. So, that's, again, that's a choice, and and his son chose to leave instead of sticking around. And he was 42 years old, so it wasn't like a teenager making a choice to go or anything of that nature. The thing that I've been hearing of with increasing... Um, in increasing numbers is really sudden heart attacks and and that includes people in their early 20s and cancer diagnosis where people are going within two or three weeks you know feeling fine going to the doctors for a checkup finding something having some extra tests and oh my god you've got three weeks and they're gone yes um I got a uh, Skype call from somebody, in fact, uh, a friend of mine, the 
put me in touch with this person because they have a friend with a rare type of cancer that the doctors have never seen, really, before. And so uh, he put me in touch with this person because there's ways that they can cure the cancer without using chemo or radiation whatsoever, and it's called baking soda and sugar. Mm. And you sure? Doesn't cancer What's feed up? off sugar? Cancer feeds yeah. off sugar, doesn't it? Yes, it's looking for the most energetic fuel it can find, which happens to be sugar. And the baking soda attaches to the sugar, and it goes, oh, right, yes. into the, it goes right into the tumor and starts attacking it from within and getting rid of it. Yeah, what, I actually what, talk about that in the in a book that I've got on my website. You mix baking soda and maple syrup. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. you can do that. You can take a, a soft drink. Not that I recommend a soda pop to anybody, especially nowadays. But you can take that. Uh, if you drink coffee with sugar, or tea with sugar, you can add it to that. I got to tell you, baking soda is kind of kind of tough. It's sodium bicarbonate, so it's very salty tasting. Just yep. warning. <laughs> yes, it's not nice. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank you for sharing, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. I'll leave you. Uh, I'll leave you there, unmuted, so you can join us whenever you like. Thank you. And I do. We do actually have. If I can find her, Eva, have you called in? Are you in the queue anywhere, or can we bring you in? Because I would love I to hear from Eva right now. I can add her. And also, we've got some people uh, with their hand up who would like to come out, but. Just before you do, I'd like to see if we can get Diva. Diva, are you there? You being shy? Me on mute? Yes, <laughs> you muted. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. She's there, and maybe she'll come out when she can. Okay, let's take a call, guys. We've got area code 253. Area code two five three. Mm, nope. Area code three three six. Oh, technology. We're having a day. I can't bring anyone out. Isn't that strange? You want to try it, Bob? Okay. I can't get their microphones to um, unmute. And it doesn't look like I can either. Diva said that there's an echo and she has to shut down the blog tech radio stream. Yes, you do. That would help. Well, maybe we are seeing more evidence for an electromagnetic glitch because <laughs> blog talk doesn't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's really weird. Everything's just sitting here spinning. You got that too, Bob? Uh, yeah, it's just spinning. It's Yeah. Uh, okay, guys, sorry. I don't know if we're going to be able to take calls today. But um, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> okay. Did anybody else find... I'm just asking if anyone else actually did go out and have a look and see if they could find any other evidence for some some news on Google for glitches. With the uh, before it's news. Oh, hang on. Yes, Earth's magnetic field is shifting. Geomagnetic. Oh, okay, we've got something on before it's news. Earth's magnetic field shifting? Question mark. Geomagnetic storm or something else? The Earth's magnetic field is fluctuating greatly today. Take a look at how the magnetic lines for our planet look today and compare that to how they are supposed to look directly below it. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Guys, go and have a look at that on Before It's News. They've got quite a few images and videos discussing this. So we might be onto something. That's exciting. Okay, so I don't know... Hello? I don't know any... Oh, hello. Oh, we hey, got someone. Hey, Randy. Hey, Randy. <laughs> are you, are you 253 or 336? I'm 336. 336. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I, I, we can't tell what's going on at this switchboard end because it's crazy. Yeah, it took a while. Yeah. 
It's still actually not showing that you're there at my end. Yeah, it's on my end either. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Did you have a question or a comment or just listening? Well, I I tried to call in last night and uh, I think my phone cut off about the time you unmuted me last night. So anyway, mm-hmm. what I, was, I wanted to ask about the document that we were talking about last night. Well, what yeah. situation would we use that document in? <laughs> we We wouldn't. It's okay. That's, yeah, it's not something that you need to to go and okay. uh, do anything with or file or. Okay. Been done. Well, I wanted to add something that every time I listen to the show, I think about the hundredth monkey theory and 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 uh, how this all is gonna, you know, once enough people catch on to what's really going on here, uh, I think it'll be a you know just a sh- automatic switch over. Mm-hmm. Every, time, every time I hear the show, I think about the hundredth monkey theory, and I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was our intent. One of our intents when we started this show was to reach three percent. Because in an interview I did with Daniel Brinkley, just in the course of the conversation, he said it only takes three percent to change the world. So that was our intent: get out, get out there, and get you know in touch with three percent of the population. That was a big ask. But, um, well, I think it would take three percent of people that really understand it too, not just three percent. Period, but three, enough people that really understand, right? Well, I think that you get to a certain point where it really doesn't matter how many people understand or get it or are awake, because whatever's coming is just it can't be stopped because it's it's part of the absolute plan. Like you know, I, yeah, yeah. You know, when you talk about a, you know, everybody keeps everybody kept kept asking in the chat room last night. You know, I don't under I don't understand why they're saying all these things are irrelevant. I mean, we use the word irrelevant more than we said op referenced oppt last night yeah. because we we can feel it. And we we have a pretty good idea of, of of where we're going. Can we sit back and? explain here's what's coming you know because that's what everybody wants to know what's coming what do you guys know that we don't know well we don't know you know we don't know what it's going to look like we can feel it just like everybody else and we see all the uh, signposts that are saying that something big is on the horizon something big is shifting um but we talked about it last night deva made a great comment said there's no way we could possibly explain at our current level of consciousness, what a higher degree of consciousness is going to look and feel like. It just can't be done. You have to feel it. You have to be able to immerse yourself in it in order to be able to um, understand it. Bob had that great analogy of that. I can't remember what abstract food you used, Bob, some some fruit that tasted like bubble gum. It was a canippa. <laughs> a canippa. But you can't, you can't describe to somebody what something tastes like in the, unless they have... Um, some context. And well, another thing last night about when y'all were reading this document, I could feel the separation disappearing between, you know, how we usually separate our finances from our spiritual life, from, you know, from every aspect of our life has been divided. And I felt like last night while this document was being read that those separations were leaving. We were becoming one in everything, transparent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to understand it at an intellectual level. It doesn't take... I don't think it takes that. I think it's just about a knowing inside. And you may not be able to articulate it. You may not be able to explain it. You may not have a clue what it looks like, but you can feel it and you know it. Right. If I can can add to what Brian was saying about how our consciousness will not allow us to to see what it's going to be like, Um, I've been saying since 2011 it's going to defy human imagination. Bill Wood said, if you can imagine drinking water from a fire hose, that's what it's going to be like. Mm. Okay? And the thing that I, that I, that was said to me recently by the Sasquatch people, um, they asked me, they said, you have a clear definition of what reality is in your head, don't you? And I said, of course. And you also have a clear definition in everything that it entails for the word imagination. I said, yes. Okay. Reverse them. Flip them. Everything you call reality, call it imagination. And everything that you call imagination, call it reality. 
Now try and wrap your head around that. I dare you. <laughs> well, you know, people are asking Lisa in the chat room for a CVAC OPPT update. Um, and uh, maybe they missed the show a couple of weeks ago. What's that? Maybe they missed the show a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I guess. They... <laughs> well, um, Ron, Ron Van Dyke's uh, thing that he put out today was pretty good about that. Oh, what did he say? He was talking about CVAX and how that that some people were feeling like they were misled by thinking that it was about the money. He said it's never been about the money. It's always about the value of the person. And, and we're so caught up in this money issue that we're not seeing what really is happening. Well, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things I look at, you know, and if you've followed along, you know, and especially reading a paradigm report, you're going to understand, number one, money was a mechanism of control. Number two, all money as we know it is debt, and debt equals slavery. And so what do the people ask for? We want more money. <laughs> yeah, and if if you go back and – for people that, that really want to go back and look into the documents, that document that talked about the – um, the ten billion or the five billion or whatever it was. Go back and read it, and I think that going back and I know I talked to somebody the other day. They said they went back and re-listened to my original recorded conversation that I did with Heather. That like that connected so many dots for them, and so um, going back and, and reading the language, I, I think that uh, that's something that'll help people that are really hung up on the money aspect of of, of this whole thing. You know, Heather asked a question, and one of the, I think it's kind of really, really pertinent, and it may not seem like, but when you were talking about the uh, mag, the magnometer or the, uh, how do you, you know, I, I can't, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, magneto, <laughs> magnetometer, <laughs> magnetometer. Mag uh. <laughs> I say magnometer. It's, <laughs> it's easier. Magnet, uh, magenta magnetometer. Well. <laughs> Heather asked the question in in the chat, you know, why should your phone be sensitive to electromagnetic energy? Perhaps there's some harvesting going on there? Question mark. And ask you, why is your phone obviously designed to respond to electromagnetic energy? That's really funny you should say that, Bob, because my husband downloaded an app for his phone. And it's got a pile of things. It's got, you know, like a compass. It's got a magnetic meter. It's got uh, balances and all it, all kinds of measurement stuff. And it was the same thing I asked immediately and him, too. It's like, okay, why is there something in your phone to measure magnetic fields? Mm. Explain to me the the, the logic. I, I, it. It defies any description of, of, okay, why would a phone need to measure magnetic fields? Every phone. Not, okay, think about it this way. You haven't downloaded, it's not something that's magically in the app. The phone <laughs> itself has to have something in it already there to measure that frequency or gather the information regardless. Uh, yep. instead, of, instead of focusing on the the stuff that upsets us. Let's focus on what the most popular application for the iPhone and the Android is. The most popular application is an app that actually turns them into a phone. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, one more thing we got... I want to bring, bring up while I'm here. On N5D, and I think it's on Rumor, Rumor Mill News, and I don't have many other websites, but I pulled up this one uh, article today about OPPT, Illuminati, and the occult ties revealed. And this guy went to great lengths. I mean, this is a very long article. And he goes in and he ties the OPPT symbols to Illuminati. I mean, he just, I can't remember the guy's name, but we need to do a mob slash on this guy. Do mm. I? It might be Zen Gardner. No, actually, is that no. Paul Short? Oh, Paul Short, yes. Yeah, and it was yeah. posted on Zen Gardner. Paul Short on the 12th, 
asked for his cut of the money, and then and on the 14th, he'll be Lucifer, and then on the 15th, or not the 18th, he posted this article. And with Paul, a lot of the information is incredible. I love the Illuminati work he did on the symbol, because it doesn't matter, or on the logo, the logo, it was funny because when you, he actually reversed it, he was so focused on the content inside of the circle, he didn't realize the, when you reversed it, so it's still there, the circle of absolute truth that wraps all that around for transparency, and the words that are highlighted when you turn it upside down says accountability and transparency. So, so Paul went from show me the money. I actually saw that series of emails. Paul went from demanding money, that OPPT give him money, and then he went on a yes, I did see that a rant and called he <laughs> called her the Lucifer, and and then when he uh, and then he went and put that up. So you know, pulling up the article. The, a lot of the information though, he, I don't know what documents he was reading because he went to filing. He was, uh, I have no idea exactly where he was getting his information, but the filings are all there. The rod is all there. And as far as the symbol, no, it's not Illuminati. It has many symbols inside that logo, but it's all wrapped in a circle of absolute truth so that everyone could see transparently what everything is and um, accountability could be made. You know, I did interview Mike Rosarian once, and he talked a lot about logos and symbols and sacred geometry and what have you. And <clears throat> one of the things he said very clearly was sacred geometry is sacred, and it speaks to our subconscious. And that's why a lot of the logos and symbols used by the Illuminati have been adopted. And they take something that speaks to our subconscious in a good way and a symbol, a piece of sacred geometry, and they inject it with a the flip energy. They flip it and try to speak to our subconscious in a, in a more negative way and and that we need to start taking back this sacred geometry I was gonna, in its original, with its original intent and meaning. Lisa, Actually, I was Lisa, just thinking. You guys, regarding energy, energy is neutral. Yeah. Energy is yeah. neutral. And when you draw that energy to you, it's a matter of the intent. Because energy is what you turned into an android again. <laughs> I just want to say, if I can say on that symbology, there's something in our recent past where it shows, beyond the shadow of a doubt, the, their plans for using that psychic geometry in a non-beneficial manner is really working. And I refer back to America Online, which was the staple, the biggest thing on the Internet when they first came out, America Online, dial-up, you know. Uh, and then Time Warner bought America Online, and the first thing it did was uh, use the AOL Running Man. And if you've done any studying, the the AOL Running Man is identical to the Egyptian symbol of the devil. <laughs> and so it backfired on me. AOL is probably the most defunct company in the entire world right now. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, I was thinking as you were, as you were talking, Lisa... There is not a single shape that you could draw on a piece of paper that I couldn't write a 500-page report on how that shape was used by the Illuminati or the cult. Uh, any shape you want. I don't care what it is. You know, parallelogram, hexagram, a any shape you want. It's been used for both good and evil. And, and well, the thing that bothered me about this whole article is that energy just got poured into it. Got to, to just make the OPPT look bad, maybe. Well, my my question to my question to him is, why is he looking for evil? Exactly. 
Why are you looking for evil? If you're looking for it, you're sure to find it. I don't care if you're looking at the most purest saint, pope, or whatever kind of divine figure you want. If you're looking for evil, you will surely find it. And now you have to ask the question, why is it that you're looking for that? Why is it that you're why is it that you're looking for money? Because you feel lack. Why do you feel lack? Because I I, I don't have control over my life and, and people are taking away your power. And it's always been about power. It's not been about money. I mean how many houses and how many cars do you think they want? They've got billions and billions in their bank account. It's not about the money. The money is is something that they throw out, throw around, and they use it to control the people who are too who are too ignorant to see past that game. And people, Ooh, really someone's really that. noisy in the background. I don't know who it is, but thank you. Oh, could I just make one more comment on this? And and it, uh, I just I like to point when we have this sort of discussion about symbology, I like to point people at branding, just simple common branding. And if you look at the brand that a, that is associated with a product, it could mean any old thing when it's first introduced to you. It's you know if it's a circle with a triangle superimposed of it, you know they might associate that with cheese, or they might associate it with car tires. What they do is they limit our thinking about that particular geometric shape to something very specific and then they associate emotions with it. Okay, that's what's actually going on. And they might be positive emotions, they might be negative emotions. In the case of branding, they want to associate positive because they want you to buy the stuff. So the Illuminati have created a whole language of symbology and they've limited our thinking about those geometric shapes to what they want. Now I have to point out that in the filing yesterday, one of the things that was audited and reconciled is any and all other limits so why are we limiting our thinking about what are just ordinary geometric shapes let's just take them back okay so all those illuminati symbols folks they don't mean anything anymore nothing they are just shapes so <laughs> let's go there instead heather are you there did you are you back clearly yeah, I'm here. <laughs> okay, because we really didn't hear what you said last time. You you became an android. Can you remember what you said to repeat it? Oh, I was just saying that, um, you know, symbols are like words. They're just a vehicle for energy. So if you look at look at the one who packed the energy into the vehicle, you'll find your culprit. But like Chris said, it's, it's irrelevant. Yeah. The, symbol, the symbols are all reconciled, and now it's just pure energy, and they can't touch it. And hopefully at some point, they'll actually reconcile themselves into that pure energy. And do we have Diva yet? Has Diva uh, managed to get us off online and audio? Diva, you there? Oh, there you are. No, this is Dee. Oh, sorry. (laughs) Diva's still having serious technical issues. Okay. We couldn't use her last night either, remember? I would like to postulate a theory, if I may. Right now, uh, we're seeing away. things. We're seeing lots of things change, and my theory is that uh, things are changing because people are waking up. Yes. They really are waking up, and because that energy, that hundredth monkey effect, as somebody mentioned, because it's going out there. People are starting to ask questions, and they're starting to see things, and it's all starting to change much faster. So I just want to postulate that that's my theory. Well, no argument here. Absolutely. Nope. But I would like to hear from the people in the chat room in terms of uh, what's going on for them, what's changed, what's changed for you internally. Are you, you know, I I get emails all the time from people telling me that, um, you know, new abilities have come online. Suddenly they're able to hear things that they never heard before, see things they haven't seen before. Um, I'm getting those kind of emails regularly. So I would love to hear um, the Cyprus thing as well. Oh, okay. People waking up. Yep, 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 yep. 
there's there's one thing I wanted to to, to make. zero tolerance for the old world order. Okay. And maybe we 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 can speak on this. Mhm. The the new system, you know, um, and whatever you know how how this this new system is going to look like, I don't know, but I do know it's a universal system. It's an absolute universal system. So we're not just talking about you know. Uh, one country here, one country there. We're talking. We're not even talking about the whole planet. We're talking about a universal system. You know, someone asked me today, Bob a Seraph, I think, and he was like, "I'm going to go on a show. They're going to ask me about the new Treasury system." He said, "What do I tell him?" I said, "Read the document because that document yesterday is your new value system." And what will happen is, is those that are not remembering quite yet how to what value is, which is the energy, and how to use it to manifest whatever you want, there will be assistance from those that do. That is what is all coming behind right now. But your new value system, which is the value system that is, which all of the old powers that were, were actually using but hiding through tools of representation, it's all right there for you guys. So check it out. Right. I, I love the question you asked, Heather. You know, um, what if we end up going to the moon? Are, you think they're going to take Federal Reserve notes there? <laughs> you know, I mean, what kind of currency? <laughs> they might. Like <laughs> How about Saturn? Yeah. 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 Perhaps we're we're expecting a, an energetic, strong energetic shift. You know, in shortly, and. Associated with that will be uh, a, um, very much a big shift towards waking everybody waking up, and the the system of value that is coming out of the the work that the OPPT have done, which is now completed, won't be what we won't be what we expect. If we're looking at it with the eyes of someone from last year, it's not going to be what we expect. So this is going to be a learning process. And it's going to be extremely interesting, and it's coming our way very soon. Mm. And look on um, the subject I'm... of CVAX. On the sub, can I just say on the subject of CVAX, at the moment, at the moment, we need to get to the other side of this shift, and then resume that conversation with a different perspective. And, and of course, all the work done on the CVAX and the CVAX concepts will come directly into play, and we'll probably be getting. Uh, also, a lot more advice and suggestions from a lot more people who will have woken up in the process. Yeah, everything. It's about a it's about a matter of perception, and if you understand who you be, you do what you be. So this is the system of being, and whatever tools that you need, you then have it. It's between you yourself, and if there's others that join in, then it's between. Okay, but this is a different, um, it's a different perception compared to what we're used to. So, just really no expectations. Do this energetically. The intelligence will do what it's told to do by the heart and by the energy. So, just go in and feel it. And then next week, have the conversation if you feel moved to regarding CVAX and all of that. You may see an irrelevance, um, just like you might see an irrelevance with the former system. You remember them, but you find a better way to actually be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, I can go now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's how I, this, this irrelevance thing is is so big right now. It's really weird. I, you know, I look at my inbox, and I'm really sorry, people, if you're waiting on an answer from me for something. I have not been able to bring myself to even look at them. There is if there's resistance on my part, to do so many things that I would normally do in, during the course of the day um, because I just feel like all I'm doing right now is processing and I don't even know what I'm processing. 
but I'm processing it, and I'm doing it in my sleep. Well, I, I think maybe that might have something to do with the naps <laughs> that everybody's uh, been taking in the middle of the day. I, I'm not a napper normally. In fact, I have to be really, really sick and go to bed to go, you know, to get any sleep during the day. It just doesn't happen. I've been having one and two naps a day. I, I'm still not sleeping anymore over night time, but oh my God, when I wake up, I know that I've just been very, very busy. Um, it's, I don't know what's going on, to be honest. I can't put my finger on it, and, but it's all happening in the back of my head. I constantly feel like I'm standing on the other side of a wall trying to listen in on a conversation on the other side, and I just can't quite get there. I can't quite make out what's being said, and it's really, really frustrating. And I'm, like, I'm operating on two different levels. There's the conscious part of me which is going through the, through the day, doing the things that you know, I, there's at least... Not that much resistance to, and there's this uh, whole other level that's just constantly working, and someone else is saying that that's exactly how they feel. That's awesome. Um, Can I and again, to add to that, like, yeah. What, is it during the night when you're dreaming? Does it almost feel like that you're 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 conscious of of your dream, and you almost feel like you're just in that dream, and then you wake up and you and it doesn't really feel like you've the work, everything's kind of melding together. Does yes. that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. I also am not known for talking in my sleep. And the other oh, several nights ago, my husband woke me up. He said, "Are you with with the words? Are you all right?" And I barked at him, and I just went, "I'm fine." <laughs> and because it felt like, and I was still so in it that I'd been pulled out of a fight, and it was. I didn't want to be pulled out of the fight. I wanted to get back into the fight. I was in the middle of something, and it was like, <laughs> leave me alone. I've got to get this finished. And I tried to get – I did. I went back to sleep within seconds, and I was back into this fight. And when I woke up several hours later properly, um, it was still with me. And I said to him, what was I saying? You know. And he said, I, I didn't tell him what I was feeling. I just asked him what I was saying. He said, I couldn't make it out, but it sounded like you were having a go at somebody. Um and I said, well, next time that happens, don't wake me. Just try and take notes. So <laughs> something's definitely going on. And these my guys dream, are with me when I wake up. My dream is almost like that when I start the dream, it's a it's a place I'm going into where it's it needs a lot of uh, cleaning up, I guess you could say. And by the time my dream is over with, it's like a pristine place and everybody's happy. I don't know what relevance that has, but. It's just like all the dreams are in that direction. Yeah, right. Yeah. There was a great post, and I'm sure somebody here will remember it. It was a woman's post yesterday that I saw about where she goes to when she meditates and all the people that have been showing up lately. Do you guys remember that one? Come on. Someone does. Uh, cause it was shared, it was shared within this group. You're muted, sorry. What, what was the question? Remember the, there was a post that was shared yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, about from a woman who described her meditation place that she goes to every day, and over the last week or so, more and more people are showing up there. And these are these are like people who her got sort of energetic guides that she's had over the years. And she actually thought she was dying. She thought maybe she was dying. And that they were coming there to prepare her, but that, that's not what was going on. Did you guys read that? You must have. I don't think I saw that one. Oh, it was brilliant. But they told her that they were they were here to observe the event. And again, it was called in inverted commas the event, which was something a term she hadn't heard for ten years. Um, ten years ago, apparently, some spiritual being came to her and, and told her that she was going to be participating in an event and she hasn't seen that being since and this is one of the people who have been showing up in her meditations now um, so they're all here to watch and it was really really it was a great article it was really interesting I'll try and find it um, but there we go with that, that term again the event you know it's been bandied around a bit quite a bit lately and it feels like whatever it is and whatever it's going to look like, I think we're in it. 
Yeah, it feels like we're smack dab in the middle of it. Yeah. Well, um, Heather, I don't know if you actually have anything you want to say, but um, there's a couple of people calling out to just hear from you. They just want to hear from you, whatever updates you've got, I guess, or whatever you'd like to share. Just be very conscious of the energy. A lot of that document, if you look at the prepaid, pre-authorized, and pre-approved, you know, we're talking about a new value system, right? Yeah. And everyone's been coming on how tired I sound. And thanks, by the way. It's like sort of looking bad and everyone's like, here you look bad today. <laughs> Um, but you're right. So the energy is already prepaid for all of this, for everybody. And just really focus your energy consciously on what you want. So my energy, energy is pouring through me into that document, out into the, the whole sources universe, eternal essences universe. And everyone that focuses attention or pays attention or energy, pays energy to it, they com- exponentially compound and accumulate that. And it manifests things faster. So not only now is it in our consciousness, but it's in the consciousness of a lot of sources universe, a lot of eternal essences universe, and they're now focusing on the same thing, which means that instead of just the potential 7 billion focusing on things, you have how many in sources universe in eternal essences universe? They just came online. Someone's got a lot of background. Thank you, Brian. 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 Thank you, Brian. Really? What happened? Me? Okay. All yeah. right, I'm muting. Okay. <laughs> so I would just ask that everyone really pay attention to where they're going to put their energy. Um, like I said, that's, what is happening now has actually it started quite a bit ago, um, this last stage here, and actually the first stage to the now. So I'm fine. All this energy is pumping out, and it's, it's going whether you consciously check into it or not. But when you do check into it, you exponentially assist in manifesting this faster so that visible, tangible you can touch it, you can move it, you can use it. Um, so that would be the thought that I would have out there on that, especially those that are really looking for money systems. You know, it's not a money system, it's a value system. You want absolute truth, which is what I promised, as well as the other trustees or Randall Caleb, as we are now, because there's no more track. Um, we gave you exactly what you asked for. Here's the value system. Now, if you need tools and representation, that's what you'll get. Otherwise, for those with just wanting absolute value, absolute truth, you will have the absolute data to be able to use that absolute value as it was always intended, as it always is. So I love you guys. Lots to think about. Don't even think about it with your brain. Think about it with your heart. I'm just busy in the background here trying to find the page that I was referring to earlier so I can share it with you all. So whoever wants to talk can talk. (laughs) Don't wait on me. I'll be a few minutes. Hmm. No one wants to talk. It's just like everyone. This is one of the most casual conversations or casual shows we've ever had. I want to talk, but I think I've – is there a lot of background noise right now? No, it's fine. Oh, you're good. good. Oh, I thought I was going to have to mute myself out for the whole call. Um, one thing I want to say, Chris, before you uh, pass the mic is um, you know what a lot of people are looking for. You know, I've been I'm on Facebook and I see the chatter and all the chat rooms, and I'm looking at the chat room right now, and everybody's looking for things. They're looking for signs of this event, and what people I think really need to sit on is that this event is it's internal. It's it's not external. You know. It's when we have an internal shift, it changes how we see ex- things externally, but it's not our external environment that gives us the signs that there is an event. Somebody said we are the event. Yes, that's exactly true. We are the event. And it's this shift inside of us, it's this shift in consciousness that allows us to perceive the world around us differently. 
So start going. That's why when we say it, 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 it frustrates people when we say go within. I mean, anybody see that's seen my little picture, they see me meditating because I, I've tried to make a formal practice in my life of meditation and going within because I, I believe, I truly believe with all my heart and soul that that's where all the answers to the universe lie. It's just you can't, you, you have to be able to sit in that stillness to be able to untap that, that power that everybody has within. So that's why we say go within. Don't let it frustrate you. That's just where the answers are. So that's what I, the, the, I'm napping. Yes, I took a two-hour nap today, and I slept nine and a half hours of sleep. I got nine and a half hours of sleep last night because uh, my body is telling me prepare yourself. So that's what I'm doing. So that's um, just wanted to throw that out there because everybody's asking what's it going to look like and what 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 is it and how's it going to you know we I, if I were to sit here and tell people oh this is you know what I, I think the more that we try to express what it might look and feel like in words the farther away we get from the absolute truth of what it will be. So. Okay, guys, I have found it and I've put it in the chat room several times and I'll do it again right now. It's Oralin dot com. So it's, you'll find it there, bolded, and it was very good. And also, I will put a link to before its news article that I mentioned before in regards to the magnetics. So there's that one. So they're both in the chat room. <clears throat> um, oh. Yeah, Brian, sorry to interrupt. Oh no, I was done. I was done. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass the conch to Chris. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, I just wanted to to point out what Heather said a, a minute or two ago because you might have missed it. She said what, what's being provided is a value system uh, which will be operated at an energetic level. Now, I, I don't know what that looks like yet because it's not quite here yet, but we will soon. But she also said if we need it, tools will be available and representation will be available. And that is, you know, some, some means, if you need to, of converting it into some current form of currency to deal with a specific problem you have. That's the way I'm interpreting it. Now, please correct me if, if I don't have that right, Heather. Uh, but the, the bottom line is that um, you know, within, within days, um, uh, we will see something completely new appearing on this planet. Now, what does days mean? Well, it could mean a week, could mean 10 days, but very soon. Sorry to be vague, feel? folks. What, what do, do you, I feel? When you, well, yeah, I mean, when you, what do you think you mean by something very different? I'm actually not sure. Something energetically based is not something I haven't experienced before. That's why I can't comment on it. I don't actually know what that will look like or how it will operate. And it may just get down to a knowing of one's value. And uh, But I don't know how the interaction or interchange takes place because that particular piece of technology is not in front of me yet. Um, yeah, well, the, the comment that keeps coming up is, you know, it's all good and well for me to know my value, but I can't go to an airline and you know, get the guy on the counter to give me a ticket somewhere based on my value. You know, mm -hmm. they don't, they're not getting how that can be a transference mechanism, you know, or... Well, that's what you're talking about. That's old system. And that, that's where the tools and representations <coughs> will still have to play for a time till we essentially move over entirely to the new system. Now, if Heather wants, wants to expound on exactly what tools can be provided... Uh, you know, one of the things that comes to mind is that, you know, promissory notes are one thing, a digital interface is one thing, you know, the sorts of things we've been discussing over the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, cards, all of those things, they're means of converting value to currency. Now, I need to, need to make a note, people. We are the only holders on this planet of value at this point in time. And if we keep transferring our value into the old system, we'll keep it alive. So it's not something I would pursue, but I also understand if you've got a problem you've got to solve, then you've got to solve it. Okay, what I'm getting is that overwhelmingly the people want tools. They want a, they want a representation that they can take and give to someone else in exchange. They want that. From, right, from where they're standing right here, right now, that's what they want. I think what the what Chris and the rest of us are trying to say is that we believe we're we're in the smack in the middle of some kind of energetic shift, and we don't know what what it's going to look what what it looks like and how it's going to play out or what's on the other side of this. 
But when we are on the other side of it, you may not feel the same way about having a representation. I think that's all we're saying. <clears throat> you know, I, I don't even know if it if that's what, what it is that they want, Lisa, or if what they well, want is to, be, is to be left alone. You know, they, they they want they want the bill collectors to stop. You know, they want they, they, they don't want to have to pay their mortgage. They don't want to have to pay you know, it, if if the powers that were they want more than that, Bob. They want to store, They want to be able to go and travel. They want to be able to buy a house if they haven't got one. They want to be able to buy a car, if the, you know, or a yeah, better but, one. Yeah, but but I think what we're saying is, what if people had the ability to do all those things that we're talking about? Exactly. It didn't require. I know that's what I'm saying. From where they're standing right here, required. right now. Yeah. So, but yeah. that has the ability of changing the tool. And an analogy I like to, I think that I, don't, I didn't create this. Somebody said it is, you know, we they say that um, you know we use ten percent of our brains. What if all of a sudden we had a hundred percent access to our brains, and that would give us the ability, our, our brains, a much clearer connection to our hearts, you know? And 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 then and so an idea of you know to paint a picture just as an illustration of what that might look and feel like is. Is an upgrade, it, and it, it's a paradigm shift. It's a it's a total game changer. Money. You know, you know what I thought of, Brian. You know, I mean, right when you were saying that, what if, what if there was, you know, and and I, I'm just using my imagination here. What if there was some sort of machine that you can stick your hand on, and that you can literally flow energy through, and that it will create whatever it is that you need. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, okay. Let me go. Let me go a step beyond that. What if everyone comes to the realization that the body that they're living in is the technology, is the true technology, and always yeah. has been, and always will be? What if people realize that their body can teleport instantly to another another place on the planet because it comes from this planet? All you have to do is talk to the planet, and instantly you're there. What if people realize that? I'm going to say something right now at this moment. And I'm, I, forgive me for standing on a soapbox, but i I got to say this. This is going to irritate some people. But what I was explained to me is that people simply don't have the imagination to make it through this. They don't have the imagination. And that, if that pisses people off in the chat room, I, I, I hope it does. Because I hope it does. I hope it because maybe it'll get them to start asking questions, and maybe maybe it'll start them to get to looking at things that they consider crazy in a new way. You know, and 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 people believe so strongly. They believe so strongly in their limitations. You know, just as much as they believe so strongly in evil. You know, and they they look for. You know, I. I I, I don't, you know, how to how to stop people from looking for reasons why things won't work, and and they're looking for evil, looking for limitation, and you'll surely find it. And and this is this is the you know people people don't there is, and, and I'm not even you know going into ta- tap, ta- tapping into our own biotechnology. But there has been external technology that can do those things. And there is nothing external that can be made that did not come from internal. There is no technology outside of yourself that you cannot do within yourself. And if people start to realize that, and stop believing in their limitations and start opening themselves up to the possibilities. I can't even keep up with the chat room now. It's going too fast. I can't read anything. I, apparently, I've pissed some people off, Lisa. <laughs> you may well have. Who knows? <laughs> um, there are people in there just telling us all to shut up and let Heather talk. So apparently, they want um, two hours of nonstop Heather. So. Oh, well, you know, Heather Heather gets spotlight often enough, so we're giving her a break right now. Aren't we, Heather? She's on break. She's on break. I'm telling you. She's on break. Okay. She's off visiting all the other chat rooms. She's bouncing all over Skype at the moment. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, guys, um, 
I mean, I know what I'm trying to say, and I and I know I think we're all on the same page while we're saying this. Is that you know what you want right now, what you think you want right now, is, is coming from your perspective, and, and we we actually think that everybody's perspective is is about to change. I'm gonna, and I've got no idea what it looks like on the other side. I want to say something else about this. I want to say something else. Uh, it was explained to me in all the myriad fashions. It was explained to me because what we sense through our five senses, we call reality. And what was explained to me is that the most addictive drug in the entire cosmos is called reality. Mm. <laughs> How, now, to wrap your heads around that one. Hello. Listen, I did just see a comment in the in the chat room about a um, uh, 70-year-old has gone to jail for not paying their taxes or something. Um, we, you, you do have a tool you can use. You know, we've got the courtesy notice. Start using it. Um, that is a tool that you can use in just about any and all situations. There's five different ones out there, uh, versions of it, to deal with different situations. So if you haven't used one yet in that circumstance, then start. Um, and if you have used one, then start with the invoicing. Take it, take it to the next step. Take it to the next step. Um, they have no no right, as we all know, to incarcerate a 70-year-old person for not paying tax. Tax! So, did I say that with enough venom? Tax! <laughs> um, <laughs> so use it. We've got tools. Use them. And, and, and force, you know, you've got to force the, the issue. Ask the questions. Number one, prove to me that the government that you're, you're enforcing is not a corporation. Number two, show me how that said corporation has any authority over me without my consent. And thirdly, that that said corporation has not been foreclosed as of December 10th. You know, ask those questions and demand an answer. You know, when they when they keep trying to divert you, you know, this this law and this court, blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. Let's get back to the real issue. Are you a corporation or not? And what do you have to do with me? I, I, just a, a point of humor because I love throwing humor in, and I really feel like this show needs a, a touch of humor. You were asking if you, if you said tax with enough venom. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this. You almost said it with as much venom as one word that all women all over the planet say, and none of us men ever know exactly what's behind that word, and that's why it scares the living hell out of us. And that word is fine. Fine. I knew you were going to say that. Oh. Fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Yes. <laughs> I can actually say that with more venom, I think. <coughs> oh. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to try and bring somebody else out because I, I think our – uh, eternal heart exercise. OPT was the eternal heart exercise. Now the heart's pumping. Exactly. Love it. Heather. Heather just typed in that <clears throat> OPPT was an eternal heart exercise. And now all hearts are pumping. And, you know, brilliant. I love it. Um, someone asked me if... Uh, there was somebody in the queue or a particular number in the queue? Oh, 714? Yeah, who is it? That's Katrina. She's OPPT uh, Orange County. She's awesome. I'll see if I can find her again. Oh, yeah, hang on. I can see one. No, that's not it. She, I, w I want her to share what her plan is with her group tomorrow night for the Equinox. Kat Katrina, are you there? I've got a 714 unmuted. Katrina. Katrina. Oh, maybe it's not. There's another one. Hang on. Here. Okay. Katrina, are you there? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, lovely. Seven one four. Can you hear me? Yep. Can, hi, Katrina. Yep. Okay. Hi, guys. I love you all so much, and I love that this. I've always known this is an eternal heart exercise. <laughs> <laughs> And and this is so marvelous. So what we're doing tomorrow night at sunset, uh, the crack between the worlds, one of the most potent alchemy times to do energy, is we are going to stand at the sunset offering the rose petals of our hearts 
to my mother's oceans, and we are going to read the document that was filed yesterday. So she was breaking up a little bit, but she said they're at sun at at uh, the sunset um, on the coast in Orange County. They're going to go out there, OPPT Orange County Group, and they're going to read the document, the last filing, um, to celebrate the equinox. So if you're in the area and want to join in, go look. We're going to be at Corona Del Mar Park, uh, Corona Del Mar Beach. Corona Del Mar Beach, any any Orange yeah. County, Southern Californians. I don't know if you've heard about the magnetic bracelets that everyone's wearing. Well, we have one, but uh, just you know, it helps. You know, you know the benefits of magnets. Oh, but okay. Somebody it. asking a good question. Are we getting two lines here? Yeah, I think you might have. We do have. Uh, got the I'm going to try- and I don't know which one you are. I know. Yeah, somebody else is asking a question. Because uh, I wanted to ask something. This is so important, and I know that this is why the energy is being crazy right now. It's talking about, uh, Brian, is okay. does it feel right to say something about the grid I was talking about? Yeah, I, I don't know how much time you're going to have, um, but if you want to throw it out there. By okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me, or do I need to change headsets? We can hear no, you. You're right. Okay, you can hear me? Okay, mm-hmm. here's here's the thing, is that this is one of these really big game changers possibilities. Now, I, I've been going back and forth because I know about Article Number 5. It's saying that all limitations have been taken off. So I would like input. I keep checking with my guides, and I keep checking the energy fields, and I keep getting that, no, they, this one hasn't been taken off. And what it is is that there is an unauthentic or a false chakra system over our energy fields, over our body. Yes. I have already dismantled the one off of my body. This was actually posted on KP's blog through that George Casa, that Greek guy, I can't, I don't remember his name. Casabalas. Casabalas. Uh-huh. And, and, and actually I found the link through that. It's called The, the Secret Behind the Chakras. It's on. It's in the. It's in the body of that blog. Uh, I and was asked, I think a few months ago, um, I used to get my hair processed. So, like so hey, Katrina, we're we're losing you a little bit. Let's connect after uh, after the call or tomorrow, and I'll I'll link you in, and we can share your your um uh what you've come up with. Somebody somebody asked you in the chat. If the hosts are are paying bills and utilities, and and this is what I can say, I can't speak for everybody else. Um, as far as taxes is concerned, I have not paid taxes since I don't know 2004. As far as bills and things are concerned, the money, uh, the government puts money in my account every every month. They take money out. When there's no more money, I don't worry about anything. <laughs> They don't get anything, any anything more than what's in there. They don't take anything out. Um, does that mean that sometimes the utility bill doesn't get paid? Yes. Sometimes the utility bill doesn't get paid. And this may not be everyone else's experiences, but I and, I, and if you want, I will post it. I will post the letter just so people will believe me. I get forgiveness letters from the utility company. You get what? Forgiveness letters. They let your bills go. Yeah. I'm looking at one right now. And the letter says, we have forgiven a shortfall of $137 this month under our customer assistance program. And so they just write it off. (laughs) Is that something you signed up for, their customer assistance program, or they just do it? I, 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 I don't. I, I don't sign up for anything, you know. I guess my caseworker does whatever, but I, I don't. I just don't worry about anything. There's always enough food. There's I, my power has never gone off. I always have weed to smoke. Um, I'm happy. <laughs> everything you need just turns up when you need everything it. Everything I need when I need it. You know, I mean, I am not the richest person in the world by no means. You know, I have probably everything that I that I own as far as clothes can fit in one bag. I have my computer, my phone, my printer, and my wheelchair. 
You're good to go. I'm good, good to go. <laughs> have, wheel, have wheelchair, we'll travel. <laughs> I I asked Bob I asked Bob I, was, I had some big news to share with him the other day I said all right so you're sitting down <laughs> I said oh yeah <laughs> but, <laughs> but, Bob <laughs> oh you have a wheelchair too I didn't know that mine has a, mine has a joystick I have a joystick I I have a manual one and I have an electronic one both of them are metallic blue and. uh <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, mine's royal blue and it does seven and a half miles per hour, so people have to jog to keep up keep up. Hey, speedy goes us. <laughs> Mine does fifteen, so uh-huh. <laughs> I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a well I was thinking about thinking about when the warranty goes away, I was thinking about uh attaching two chainsaw motors, one on each wheel and seeing if I can get it up to eighty or ninety miles an hour. <laughs> Oh, then you'll be dangerous. Watch out. If you're in Texas. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, I was just try- I was trying very hard to monitor the, the chat room, but it's just going by far too fast. So let's bring out another caller. Uh, we've got area code 757. 757? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, what was your name? Peace, blessings. This is uh, Sovereign Lion. I want to say absolute love, absolute peace, absolute light. And Thank I, you. Right back at you. This has truly been a, a eye-opening experience dealing with the OPCC, uh, freedom range movement all around. And right now, it's the, the atmosphere is vibrating so high in the is just truly a peaceful moment, and just listening to the to the to the, to the chat, you know, there's just so much things going on all around the universe, and there's people that's at different levels in their ascension right now. And what we truly need to be uh, understanding is that everybody is different paths along on their ascension, and we need to show compassion to each and every one out there to understand that no question is a stupid question. No way that someone is feeling is is, is is wrong because people have been dumbed down. People have been battered down, you know, enslaved. There's just countless ways to say what has truly happened to people out there. You know, and to 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 know what happened yesterday with the filings and uh, eternal essence and body, you know, key to the third power. It, it it was a beautiful feeling when I when I read it. I said, "Wow, I want to feel that one." And unbeknownst to me, within seconds, I was feeling that one. So. It's just, it's just, I don't know what's coming in the days to come. Uh, I just want to know that it's going to be, it's something positive that's coming. And one of the things that's uh, concerning me is the, is the, is the mixed messages on people going to be burning up after tomorrow if they don't start meditating and. Elevating and ascension. And I just want to know what are y'all thoughts on those things. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Absolutely not. <clears throat> Absolutely not. You know, it's funny. D and I, we we talk about this all the time. D's got D. How many? You got twelve kids, or is it eleven? Very funny. <laughs> very very funny. <laughs> no, 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 but I between have, I have... me, Heather, Lisa, and Nicole, we have nineteen kids. Ooh. Baby uh, factories, baby factories. Yeah, so yeah, it's, it's a know, little we're bit not e- busy enough. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> bit easier for a guy like me with no kids and currently no job to find time to meditate. But is it going to make or break you if you meditate? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Some people, um, you know, they like to go on walks. Some people like to go on hikes. Some people don't like to spend any time in solitude or quiet whatsoever. They like to keep busy. 
to each their own. There's no wrong way. There's only your way. And there's seven. We each have our own way. It's all the different paths up to, up the mountain that all lead to ultimately the same place. Yeah, I've all, honestly, I've always been a bit wary of someone who says you must do this practice and you must do it this way in order to ascend. There's a right way and a wrong way. That's always made me kind of cringe, to be honest. Well, well Lisa, you've got you have to chew all of your food, you know, on the right side 33 times, <laughs> then on the left side 33 times, you know, and you've got to you know you've got to sit in 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 a certain position and eat only mung bean. <laughs> Oh, but you've got to activate the bar. You've got to activate your Merkaba exactly this way. Otherwise, you're activating the wrong Merkaba, and you're going to be and then you, you know, and it's this color, and it's it's this shade of blue, and instead of that shade of blue, and oh my god, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started waking up to all of that, and I was just like, "Are you kidding me?" Like I can't meditate, and I can't visualize to save my life. My brain doesn't ever shut up. Like finding that there, you know. Find that quiet place. The quiet place doesn't exist for me. It has. <laughs> and when you've got four kids, it's like even if you found it, it'd get interrupted. So don't worry about going yeah. there. Yeah. Like I, I, I said, I, I would just love to have one day, just one day, one day. I, I just want. Oh, and another just thing, for, just wanted I just, to say, just about everybody on the panel, except for maybe a couple of us, we all smoke cigarettes. So there. <laughs> Are you kidding? Are okay. you kidding? I smoke, I smoke a pipe and cigars, too. Are you kidding? Wow. <laughs> and I'm oh, that. Oh, 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 you know, I, I don't like that, where this is going. <laughs> that's good. Uh, this, is a just, slippery slope. this is a slippery slope, this conversation. I, where this is headed. I just want to point <laughs> something out about meditation that nobody's ever thought about or ever realizes. Uh... When you're watching television, you're meditating because you're not thinking. You're still. You're sitting there watching the television, and you're meditating because you have no stray or random thoughts that come to your mind until a commercial comes on. When you go to the movies, you're meditating. When you go to church, you're meditating. And how many people have you seen falling asleep in church because they're meditating so hard they knock themselves out? <laughs> Right. You call it when you go to sleep in church. <laughs> right. um, yeah. oh, look, I, I feel like sometimes I'm a complete contradiction or I'm just all inclusive because I get up in the morning and I do my fresh juices and I, you know, do my oil pulling and I'll, and I'll do the rites and I'll, you know, the day starts off amazing and I end the day with a glass of red and, and you know, some organic tobacco. So I'm all over the shop. But I bet you, eat, I bet you drink those juices right when you need to, you know, yeah. and, and and you eat whatever foods that you have a craving for right when you're supposed to, right when your body needs whatever it needs, you know, you 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 really got to start to relax about a lot of these things, you know, um, because only when you're relaxed can you really just be, you know, just do what makes you happy as long as you're okay. in a good mood and you're in a good frame of mind. You know, and if, if that means, you know, eating a ham sandwich, then do that. You know, whatever it is that, that that makes you feel good, do that. As long as you're not hurting anyone, don't worry about it. Um, someone just put in the chat room, is there any OPPT updates? And I would have to say, please go and listen to yesterday's show. Um, and that was the update. Actually, and because there, there is one clarification. Okay. Everyone was, and I just got this again from Aaron, Jason, it's, uh, you know, if everyone, if OPT is supposedly retired or reconciled, then the courtesy notices all the OPT filing, DTC, and are they no longer good? And here's what I can say. The commercial registry, along with the Akashic records, everything else, has been reconciled into eternal records, so they're still there. They're still there and they're still good. It doesn't mean that all the filings are gone, that it the they no longer have any value. They are still there, they're reconciled into absolute records. Okay? You know, that only that only leaves one question in the entire universe at this point. It really does. And that question 
is about atheists. You know, atheists that don't believe in God or anything like that. The question is, what exactly is it that they holler out when they have an orgasm? <laughs> you always take the, the conversation, you know, in strange directions, Thomas. Well, well Thomas, just, I, I just have to say that all of those people, they're all going to hell, and everybody knows that. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Can, Can you guys hear me? Hi, Diva. Hear me? Oh, yes, Diva. No, 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 we can't hear you at a. That hurricane <laughs> Katrina came through. <laughs> we can't hear. You. <laughs> Sorry. Can hear, can hear, love. Just, but yes. So you can hear me, okay? Yes. Yes. Oh, good, because like Thomas, that was the piece that I really needed to respond to. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the piece about the piece about the cosmic orgasm. <laughs> oh, it's a cosmic orgasm. Okay. Uh huh. I'm I'm trying really hard right now to write an article that is called "Cosmic Oneness Is a Psychedelic Thing." <laughs> <laughs> and it's really it's it's really an incredible experience. There's there are no words as. As you guys have all so beautifully summarized, and everyone is so amazingly embodying the fact that we are eternal essence embodied as eternal presence. And when we begin to interact with those source codes, so these source codes are these higher energetic frequencies What begins to happen in our bodies, it's an internal experience, and we begin to lift up. And we begin to embody these superpowers that you see in the Incredibles and these fun things that the kids still remember you can do. But guess what? That's happening now, and it's an inward experience. So, Brian, I totally resonate with what you just said. And the experiences that I've been having and and have been having for some time are, as as we were talking before, it's kind of hard to fathom what this shift in consciousness and shift in experience is to be from our present perspective. But as we begin to embody these things and have these experiences, and I can share some of the things that I'm having at this present moment. Mm-hmm. Anybody interested? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Please, continue. Okay. One of the things that's been happening is aging begins to reverse. And and people begin to look at you with this face of like, how can that be happening? <laughs> and you can begin to look at yourself and wonder the same thing. You're looking in the mirror and you're going, Wow. I look like five years younger right now, and then maybe a couple weeks later, you look ten years younger, and maybe a couple years, at least a week later. After that, time becomes insignificant, so forget about that. So there's there's all of these manifestations, things like I've had the experience of levitation, where your body lifts up. I know really? that's hard. Is that hard to imagine? <laughs> Well, I, I used to, about 10 years ago, I actually used to try and do that. I okay, ground, and, we, but. and we can do it, and we can do it. And we can begin to focus on objects, go into your heart space, and begin to see or imagine or feel your connection with that object, and then watch that object move. Now, I've experienced that. I've experienced okay, telekinesis, so, and I've experienced telepathy. Awesome. And these yeah, things are. Cool. And how about has anyone jumped timelines? Well, I experienced something that I wasn't sure whether that was the answer or not. It, that it did occur to me as a possibility that I jumped a timeline. There was so one thing I wanted to mention, Diva, about what you said. Yeah. About eternal presence. 
I was uh, going through, and I was going through uh, Greg Braden's material again, and in particular the God Code. And yeah. in the God Code, you know, they've literally been able to take the DNA apart and look at it, and they can. They've noticed that there's certain patterns that they can trace certain ancient languages, uh, you know, through the through these patterns, and literally these patterns start to spell out words, and the words start to make sentences. And the sentences make sense. And on the first layer of DNA, on every living thing that they've looked at so far, it all starts with the same sentence. God eternal within the body. Oh, seriously? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Yep. I read that. That's true. God eternal within the body. I just had serious body shiver from the top of my head right to my toes when you said that. And D, that's a perfect example of how this essence communicates with us. It's within. So that messaging is coming within us, and then we're integrating that. And so what's happening right now, it's, it's called a period of divine human upgrade. Or you could call it, we're becoming physical angels. Hmm. Someone just asked me if I would clarify what I was referring to when it came to that, what I experienced that I thought might have been a timeline jump. Um, <clears throat> and it was it was actually back at the end of 2011, though. Um, so it's not recent. Oh, it, was when I, it was when I woke up one morning. This was to, because I think I've mentioned this many times on the show that 2011, the theme of 2011 for me, and it seemed globally, was fear. It was like it was time for us to all shake off our fear, face our fear, all that stuff. And I put myself in one situation after another where I was confronted with fear all year. Um, and it just kept hitting me in the face. And I kept having to process through it. And then it was a, I literally woke up one morning at the beginning of September 2011 and I felt the whole thing had shifted. And I felt the split. I felt a split in the collective. And I felt that I was no longer on this fear timeline that I'd shifted timelines. But that was the first thing that occurred to me. But nothing else seemed to be different. Nothing else seemed to have changed. It was just my feeling about the collective and where we were going. It's like, you know, I went to bed one night and it felt like we were on a negative, heading for a bad place. I woke up the next day and it had all changed. And that, so the, the timelines was one of the things I thought of. <clears throat> I uh, I wanna wanna, I know I'm jumping in again, and you're all cringing at the moment. I can feel it. Hey, hey Tommy, before it. you before you jump in, I gotta jump out. I love all you guys. Everybody in the oh. chat remembered in the call. Um, gotta gotta uh, go be a Reiki angel for uh, yoga class this evening for my girlfriend Brittany. So love you guys. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a good night. Good Thanks, night. Bye bye. 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 Uh, I'm gonna put a link here in the Skype chat. And please share it in the chat room. This is a neurosurgeon, anybody who knows neurologists and what they do, they work with the brain and the human body and all the things that it does in the human body. This man went through a near-death experience, Dr. Evan Alexander, and he was in a coma for seven days, and he brought back years worth of memories while he was in a coma for seven days. And he's mm. proving scientifically that there's no way he could bring those memories back to the body or that he was hallucinating because they have medical records showing that his brain cortex, you know, where the brain attaches to the spinal column, mm -hmm. was clinically dead. There was no activity in the brain whatsoever. So there's no reason why he should have all these memories. But he's I can showing see it. that. Well, that's one of his Good. recent interviews. So you can put that, share that link in the chat room there with folks. And, and I encourage everyone to listen to it because he says it. Oh, God, I loved listening to that interview today because he said the very thing that I've been trying to wrap my head around where they said, reverse it. Everything you call reality, call it imagination. And everything you call imagination, call it a reality. And he said it right in the interview. He said, there are many things over there that are more real, real than anything we're dealing with here right now. So he it's validated. More real. Yeah. Yes, more real. Yeah, it's a great... I did put the link in for everyone. I'll just do it again. 
there you go, YouTube link if you want to w watch that interview. It, it was fascinating. And it's it's always great when somebody from the medical field who is a complete cynic <laughs> has an experience like that themselves. Uh, and a lot of people give that a lot of weight as opposed to being somebody without those credentials. But, oh yeah, it was a fascinating interview. It was great. So oh, thank you, you for reminding what, me of it. What, did you catch it on my Facebook page? I don't know. I don't know where, where who shared it with me. I don't know. That, I doubt it was Facebook. I hardly have time to go there anymore. Oh, well, there you have it. <laughs> I was going to call you a snake. You're a snake. <laughs> I, I posted an article about it a few months ago, I think, on RTS. Actually, someone just Skyped me saying, would that mean that this show is now called The Collective Reality? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You know, that's yes. probably not a bad idea. Yes. like it. We used our imagination to create this reality. The tech, and one, you know, if you listen to the intro, the intro talks about, and this goes back to what we were talking about before, is that we are the technology. Our imagination is the technology. Our bodies are a technology in and of themselves. Uh -huh. And you know, I, I do believe that that we all put our collective intent into creating the, the reality we're currently experiencing, and <sighs> here we are. Let me say it this way, Lisa. The evidence is right there. Because even science calls the human body a biomechanical machine. Mm. So if you need any, any more evidence, just look at your own science, your beloved holy science that calls the human body a biomechanical machine. It's a technology, baby. <laughs> and the thing okay. is, with this technology is that now the time has come where we can program our computer as we choose. Yay. As yes. we embody. It's not an in, it won't be an installed software program from, from elsewhere. We can actually run no. our own software. <laughs> it's inside. It's inside us. It's, this consciousness expansion is giving us access points to these amazing, what we formerly called superpowers, but are going to very shortly become commonplace. Mm. And, they, and that process is now underway. So there's very active physical upgrading in, pro, in process right now. And we are birthing to be a new species. Hi. Hi. And as this, as this potential just absolutely burst forth as fractals upon fractals. And here's this cosmic orgasm piece again that you were talking about, Thomas. Because oh. I'm, I'm having, personally, I'm having waves of, of bliss through my body where it's really hard to concentrate sometimes. <laughs> like, how do you get any work done? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And right now, I'm looking for lyric or songwriters uh, to rewrite an old song from a group called Heart, if anybody remembers that band. Heart. Oh, yeah. Okay. And the lyrics that I'm trying to figure out for this song to re re uh, reword it and rewrite it and replay it, uh, let me just sing a little touch of it before we go in. And, and, and hold your ears if you need to, okay? But deep in the night... Trying to sleep and then, ooh, Heather Tucci. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure she's shelf. <laughs> and I just, I just wanted to, I wanted to share one more thing. So, has anyone been having connection with our galactic cousins via an intermediary? But yes. So. This is a soon-to-be-also event, and it's, it's relative to, from what I'm understanding, the level of consciousness that we are at, so that we, as we are able to embody the eternal presence, that we become more accessible to contact, to enter, to exchange. And there is a potential that 
we can begin to have a relationship. What our galactic cousins are requesting of us is that we are as fully as possible able to embody the truth of our own sovereignty. That fullness of the expression of our own eternal S presence. Someone's asking you for tips on embodying this energy. Saying what? Asking for tips on how to embody this energy. Ah, okay. Well, there is a there is a meditation that actually uh, Heather shared with us, which I've been I've been utilizing this, and you know how we all there's this one where you connect with your heart space and you open your heart space and you beam that energy out everywhere. You know that one. Mm-hmm. So. Rather than beaming it out everywhere else, take it and redirect it inside, within your own being, and circulate it through your pores, circulate it through every absolute cellular structure. And then so allow walk. your inner light to come out from, say, your ch- I do it from my chest, like from my solar plexus, and then loop it back in? Take it back in. Okay. And see what happens. And oh, buckle up. <laughs> and buckle up, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, I've been doing that the, since George Cavasilis told me talked about it, you know, to uh, not and, to draw a light, light in from an external source, just to you you know, you're full of your own light, just bring that I, out. I think at this point it's it's a perfect time to submit a name change for the show from collective imagination to Diva Lucian. <laughs> and here's to look at in the cosmic mirror. Back the cosmic at mirror. You. Yeah, back at you. Okay. Well, we've only got a few a few minutes left, guys. So, um, David, was there anything else you wanted to share? I just wanted to say there's a there's a, a an, an analogy or a picture of a fan. You know, just a one of those fans when it's at rest, and you can see all the blades. Hmm. And as that fan, as we turn that fan on, the blades become more and more and more and more blurred as the fan speeds up. Yep. That's what's happening to our energy field at this moment. Mm-hmm. Okay, nice. Nice. All right. Uh, Dave, uh, sorry, D. was there anything you wanted to say before we sign off? Uh, no, I think it's all pretty much summed up. I just want to wish everyone an awesome, awesome evening. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Uh, Thomas, a quick goodbye from you. Sure. Work on the song lyrics for me, okay? It's important. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> uh, Chris? Yes, have a great evening and a, and a great rest of the week to everybody. And watch this space. And uh, think about your own value and and what you really represent. Lovely. Bob? I, what I would say is keep your imagination wide open. <clears throat> Don't eliminate any possibilities. Think big. Dream big. <laughs> <laughs> and Heather? Just that I love you. It's been a wild ride. I look forward to the next. Oh, thank you. We all love you too. Okay, quick announcement. We do have a new show starting, uh, I think it's on the weekend, this weekend, uh, hosted by a lovely young guy from Melbourne, uh, Emilio. And it will be a youth-directed program uh, called The Remembering, I think it's called. Uh, so he's going to be on there trying to talk to and represent the, the youth who who are completely awake and who know what's going on uh, giving them a space. So if you know, if you've got people in, you know, 25 and under, or even 30 and under, who uh, might be interested in tuning into that show, uh, log on to Blog Talk's 5D Media Channel and have a look at what's coming up. And even the, you know, young teenagers too, because oh my God, the stuff they've got, stuff they know is awesome. So let's give them a space to share it. So they don't want to, you know, tune in and listen to all the. Oh, us old folks. So, um, thank you, everyone, 
for joining us again this week. Uh, who knows where we'll be next week <laughs> and, how, and where we'll be sitting and how we'll be feeling and what we'll be looking like. So uh, <laughs> I'll see you then. <laughs> Bye. Bye for now. <laughs>